Hi all, welcome to the lecture 5 of the Trends in Computing course. Today we will see about grid compute. Now a grid is a collection of heterogeneous machines also referred to as nodes, clients, donors, hosts, resources and many more such terms. Now it is actually a single unified collection of computing resources. Now the popularity of internet and the availability of powerful computers and high speed network technologies at a low cost has changed the way we can use computers. Now these technological opportunities have led to the possibility of using diverse distributed computers as a single unified computing resource. So a grid, grid is nothing but a collection of computing resources and the speciality of a grid is that it consists of heterogeneous uh, machines or nodes on it. Hence a grid consists of computers, storage, advanced instruments and various environments that provide high performance computing. Now the machines and the resources along with the users are geographically separated and are connected by high speed networks. These systems and resources together create an atmosphere of a supercomputer and also it uses the distributing uh, computing paradigm and the speciality of a grid is that among the systems which are connected up to the grid, it makes use of all unused processing cycles of the connected computers to solve complex issues. That is, the user of the system can use the system and at the same time, only the unused cycles are being used by the grid. This is a, a picture diagram of a good computing environment. You can see the various resources, storage, the, the systems available, the cluster of systems available, the users and their connectivity. So this environment, this sharing and aggregation of resources is collectively called grid computing. Now IBM defines grid computing as the ability using a set of open standards and protocols to gain access to applications and data processing power, storage capacity, and a vast array of other computing resources over the internet. Another definition is a grid is a type of parallel and distributed system that enables the sharing, selection, and aggregation of resources distributed across multiple administrative domains based on their resources, availability, capacity, performance, cost, and users, quality of service, requirements. So, a grid is nothing but a, um, a, a distributed system which uh, says, aggregates all types of resources together and provides a massive processing or computing power. Now, Ian Foster describes a grid to have three attributes that is computing resources that are not administered centrally, open standards being used and quality of service being achieved. Now, another definition for grid technology is it is a technology that enables resource virtualization, on-demand provisioning and service sharing between organizations. So uh, whenever we need a large uh, computing power, instead of buying a single uh, supercomputer, we can share resources or share computing power from different systems lying all over the world which are connected together as a grid. Similar is the case for any other services or even storage. Now the problems that are beyond the processing limit of individual computers can be solved using grids. So grids are used mainly for processing problems, very complex problems that cannot be handled single handedly. Now, grids are a form of distributed computing whereby a super virtual computer is composed of by many networked loosely coupled computers acting together to perform large tasks. That is, when you connect all these systems, these heterogeneous systems into a big network, the whole the final system looks like a supercomputer. And so 
without purchasing an actual supercomputer you are getting a virtual supercomputer for usage now the size of a grid may vary from small that is confined to a network of computer stations within computer workstations within a corporation or to very large publicly collaborated uh, network of systems now why do we need grid computing Although the amount of computing power available to researchers and businesses is growing at an amazing rate, it has been growing quickly for some time, but 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 the demand for computing power is never satisfied. Now, new projects in businesses and science require unprecedented amounts of computing power, and by Moore's law, it will be never be fulfilled in the near future. Now, the rate of increase in the network bandwidth. is increasing at a rate faster than that of the processor speed which means that the way to make best use of computing power is to network many computers together in an efficient fashion now grid computing is doing this it is actually networking all the computing power together now the new york times recently published an article which argues that all science is computer science This claim is being made because every traditional science, that is physics, chemistry, maths, biology, astronomy, and etc., all rely more and more on computers and computational power. Although we need new insights to generate new research, the limiting factor in all experiments is computational power. So, grid computing is therefore seen as a computing technology enabling the advancement of all sciences. so this is the scope of grid computing now let's look into a bit of history the term grid computing originated in the early 1990s as a metaphor for making computer power as easy to access as an electric power grid that is uh, to get electric power what we do we simply plug into a socket and we don't need to worry where the power is coming or from how it or how it is coming or from where we get it all we do is we simply plug in and we get the power similarly grid computing was also meant to make uh, access to computing power as easy as uh, plugging into a electric grid now the idea of the grid was brought together by Ian Foster and Steve Tuke of the University of Chicago and Carl Kesselman of the University of Southern California's Information Sciences Institute. The trio led the effort to create the Globus Toolkit which is a de facto standard for creating grids and they are considered as the fathers of the grid. Now grid computing offers a way to solve grand challenge problems such as the protein folding the financial modeling earthquake simulation climate weather modeling and even it has enabled the large hadron collider project happening at cern and also many other projects like search for extraterrestrial um, organisms like that is the seti project and so on now these are the few national grid projects in the world that is the uh, various countries have grid projects with them you can see the names of them the grid pp by uk cn grid by china the d grid by germany the garuda and vecc by india isra grid of israel infn grid of italy pl grid of poland national grid service again of uk the open science grid of usa and the terra grid of USA. So there are many grid projects happening around the world. Now, how does a grid work? A grid computing network mainly consists of three types of machines: a control node, a computer. It is actually a computer, usually a server or a group of servers, which administrates the whole network and keeps the account of the resources in the network pool. So it keeps track. Actually, the controlling node is actually a manager. It doesn't Uh, control any other things, but it keeps uh, track of the various happenings or resources being allocated and delocated in the grid system. For the provider, it is the computer which contributes its resources in the network resource pool. That is, the computer which gives its resource, its available resource to for computing into the grid. And the user 
that is a computer that uses the resources that are available on the grid network. Now why do we need grid computing? Although the amount of computing power available to researchers and businesses is growing at an amazing rate, it has been growing quickly for some time, but, say, but, but the demand for computing power is never satisfied. Now new projects in businesses and science require unprecedented amounts of computing power and by Moore's law it will be never be fulfilled in the near future. Now the rate of increase in the network bandwidth is increasing at a rate faster than that of the processor speed which means that the way to make best use of computing power is to network many computers together in an efficient fashion. Now with computing is doing this. It is actually networking all the computing power together. Now the New York Times recently published an article which argues that all science is computer science. This claim is being made because every traditional science that is physics, chemistry, maths, biology, astronomy and etc. all rely more and more on computers and computational power. Although we need new insights to generate new research, the limiting factor in all experiments is computational power. So, grid computing is therefore seen as a computer. This is an example or a diagram of the grid computing control node and the various nodes that are attached to the grid. Now, let's look into the grid architecture. Now, the grid has a layered architecture and it usually consists of four layers that is the fabrication layer, the grid core middleware, the development layer and the applications. So let's look what each layer consists of. Now the grid application, uh, the, uh, the lowest most level is the grid fabric layer or fabrication layer. Now it consists of the various resources that is the desktops, the systems, the servers, the storage facilities available, the various networks and so on. Then the next level is the core middleware and this is followed by the user level middleware and finally the applications. Now these are the few national grid projects in the world that is the uh, various countries have grid projects with them you can see the names of them the grid PP by UK, CN grid by China, the D grid by Germany, the Garuda and VECC by India, ISRA grid of Israel, INFN grid of Italy, PL grid of Poland, National grid service again of UK, the Open Science grid of USA and the Terra grid of USA. So there are many grid projects happening around the world. Now let's look into some tools and standards used. Now the most common or the de facto standard used is the Globus toolkit. Now it was designed by the Globus Alliance and it consists of free software tools. So that is services, APIs and protocols to facilitate constructions of grid. And it is mostly wise, widely used toolkit for building of grids and it is referred to as the de facto standard. It includes tools for, among other things, security resource management and communication. The Globus Alliance also researches various issues related to uh, grid computing uh, and also issues related to the infrastructure of the grids. So almost every grid was created by the Globus Toolkit. Now the second uh, to standard that is a or a for, it's actually a forum the global grid forum it's or the ggf it performs a similar role to the development of grids such as w3c does to the w w or the world wide web it is a conglomerate of interested parties including universities research, research institutes and industry it's actually not an official body but it puts much toward or it contributes much toward the standards and best practices for grid developers. 
it is important because it provides a forum for new ideas to be discussed by all the interested parties and there are strong links between the G, uh, ggf and the globus alliance and ideas put forward by the ggf are usually implemented by the globus alliance um, some uh, standards used in the grid environment are ogsa and og this side there are many more we will just look into this too. The Global Grid Forum published the Open Grid Service Architecture or OGSA. Its main aim is to address the requirements of grid computing in an open and standard way. It requires a framework for distributed systems that support integration, virtualization and management. So such a framework requires a core set of interfaces and uh, models and bindings. And OGSA defines requirements of these capabilities or these core capabilities and provide a general reference architecture for grid computing environments. Or in other terms, it, is just, it provides a framework for creating grids. And another one is the OGSI. As grid computing has evolved, it has become clear that a service-oriented architecture should provide many benefits in the implementation of the grid infrastructure and so the GGF extended the concept defined in OGSA to define specific interfaces to various services that could be implemented that, that is similar to a web service uh, uh, different services too can be integrated with the uh, various available standards and that is supported by OGSI or OGSI defines mechanisms for creating, managing and exchanging information among grid services. A grid service is similar to a web service and it conforms to a set of interfaces and behaviors and defines how clients interact within a grid service. And it uses OGSI uses the WSDL or the web service definition language to describe these key interfaces. So these are the two standards that are commonly used for grid environment. There are many more. These are the most commonly used OGSA and OGSI. Now what are the applications of grid? It is used mostly in real-time applications, in education and training. It is used in many experience, experiments by scientists. It is used by corporation operations and also is used in medical applications and very large uh, medical uh, uh, problems like the genome problem or the protein folding problem and so on. Now what are the advantages of grid computing? It is not centralized as there are no servers except the controlled node which is just used for controlling and not for processing. That is processing is being done on every system. So there is no special system which does, does all the processing. There is only a central uh, control which is, done, which is done for controlling the usage and the coming in and going out of resources. Now it uses multiple heterogeneous machines that is machines with different operating systems are used as a single system and so the, all the in, um, complications or intricacies behind that are all uh, hidden from the user. As far for a user, all he sees is a single system from which he can use or on which he can use his work. Now, tasks can be performed in parallel across various physical locations and the users don't have to pay money for it. So, that is another advantage that is helps in parallel computation. Now it can solve larger, more complex problems in a shorter time. It is easier to collaborate with other organizations. It makes better use of the existing hardware and access of virtual uh, resources and it exploits underutilized resources and it provides better security and reliability. So the advantages are many more and has a very long list. So these are some of the few advantages that a good computing environment provides. Now the disadvantage, the grid software and standards are still evolving. 
and the learning is yet to get started and it has a non interactive job submission it needs fast interconnections some applications might require customization and resource sharing is fairly complicated and also certain applications that are being used might need licensing and so on so there are many disadvantages and challenges which the grid computing has to overcome now what are the classification of grid computing projects uh, projects are classified into th uh, three this is network grid data grid and the computing grid now high performance communication service with ignorable fault tolerance is the major goal of a network grid so um, an example of network grid applications are the virtual conferences and remote learning and uh, an example of a network grid is the world wide web itself so its main um, idea behind a network grid is to provide high per high performing communication service without any faults now the second type of grid computing project is the data grid its main aim is to share data storage capacity each node storage capacity can be visualized in a data grid for example the marine data sets range, uh, range from the very large, from megabytes to petabytes and data grids are being used here so the application of data grids are the genomic research and medical imaging and the third type of classification is the computing grid that is cpu resources among several machines are shared and it forms a computational grid now computate computing grid points specific applications which uses multiple cpu capacity so we can classify grids according to the use uh, the services that they give that is based on the grids that provide communication service the grids that provides data storage and the grids that provide computing power of processing now the topology is used inside the grid computing projects there are three ways for linking the various elements in the grid uh, there are first type is the intergrid that is sharing of resources through the internet connection is called intergrid and the intra grid that is constructing grid computing environments within an organization and then it is known as an intra grid and an extra grid that is sharing of resources between various organizations is called an extra grid topology that is private connections can be established here and organizations create grids and these are connected to each other so there are three types of topology of grid Now, what are the advantages of grid computing? It is not centralized as there are no servers except the control node, which is just used for controlling and not for processing. That is, processing is being done on every system. So there is no special system which does does all the processing. There is only a central uh, control which is done which is done for controlling the usage and the coming and going out of resources. now it uses multiple heterogeneous machines that is machines with different operating systems are used as a single system and so the all the in, um, complications or intricacies behind that are all uh, hidden from the user as far for a user all he sees is a single system from which he can use or on which he can use his work now task can be performed in parallel across various physical locations and the users don't have to pay money for it so that is another advantage that is helps in parallel computation so that's for today we'll continue in the next class with mobile edge computing and uh, today we understood about grid grid is nothing but a subset of the distributed computing architecture where uh, we use a virtual supercomputer which comprises of machines connected all over the world with of heterogeneous cap capability throughout through a network Thank you.